Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing how unsol unsolvageable is set theory. And set theory is broken so far beyond belief that it really has no possibility of being fixed. Um, set theory destroys itself without even anyone trying to destroy it. Um, I'd like to focus on an argument that was made by Professor Mukenheim on <coughs> the news group called Psy.net. So, uh, Professor Mukenheim is also referred to as WM. And he's come up with a very nice proof that set theory is flawed and it's easy to arrive at really absurd results as I'm about to explain to you in this video. Okay, so um, there's been a discussion going on this forum not just for a few months but I'd say just over a year in fact um, where WM has been trying to educate the incredibly stupid morons that live on that forum. Um, a lot of them, no doubt, are unfortunately teachers at other universities or schools and have, you know, been brainwashed by the academic mainstream. So the argument that uh, WM, as I'll refer to him from now on, uh, talks about is this. He says, suppose that you have, you begin with rows of natural numbers. So the first row has only the first natural number, one, and the second row has the first two, and the third row has the first three, and the fourth row, the first four, and so on. So um, from this, this idea here, one can really arrive at three particular three particular uh, ideas or arguments. So the first one, as listed here, is that for every n, there is at least one finite row containing it. So if you had to choose, uh, uh, let's say, a natural number n is equal to 151, then there is one finite row containing it. And in fact, all the rows that follow it also contain 151. So that there are in fact infinitely many such finite rows that contain 151 or any n that you choose to pick. So now, um, every row that contains n is finite because look, uh, any given row will go from 1 dot dot to n. Yes, so it, it contains a finite number of elements or natural numbers in this case. And it also has an infinite complement. The complement is what might appear on this side. Okay? There is no such thing as an infinite complement, and I'm sure WM agrees, but he uses that because he wants to make a point. Um, so the argument for this here is that saying every does not mean all. So when one says in mathematics for every, Okay, for every, let's say, x does not mean the same as, it's not equivalent to for all, okay, for all. So this uh, quantifier is used both for every and for all, but they don't mean the same thing. As you can see in this example here, I mean, if it only goes up to n, that means for every n, not for all, okay, not for all. Right, so then, um, when we get to the second part of the argument which says that if we have a union of all these finite rows, okay, so if we have a union of all these finite rows, there are infinitely many of them, aren't there? Dot, dot, dot. Infinitely many. Um, we can naturally say which one of these finite rows will yield a union, which is n. Okay, so, well, if we had to actually say one union, one, two, union, one, two, three, etc., 
we'd still end up with n because these are just subsets of bigger sets of bigger subsets of natural numbers. And so we can ask which of these finite rows are necessary to yield the, the set of natural numbers which is supposedly supposedly infinite. That's garbage because there is no such thing as an infinite set. But anyway. So it's pretty easy to see that the first row is not necessary. Okay, so we can just throw away the first row because it contains the second. Similarly, second row contains the third. So we can keep on throwing away these rows, right? So if we just take the union, and let's if we throw away this row, we have an empty set, and an empty set, and an empty set, and an empty set. So if we keep on taking the union of all those empty sets, theoretically, we should arrive at the set of natural numbers. But we know the set of natural numbers is not empty. So what WM says is, therefore, there remains no row with finite index. Okay, so that means, ultimately, uh, all these rows are empty, and we have the union of rows equal to the natural numbers. And so the third case here is basically a conclusion and it states either there is a single row containing n or there is not a single row containing n. Well, the conclusion is so obvious that a five-year-old can see it. Can see that. There is no single row containing n because all the rows are finite and as we know n is infinite. So this particular example that WM has been trying to explain to you the adults who live on Sci.Math has a lot of interesting points to it and proves beyond any doubt that set theory, especially set theory involving the concept of infinite, is deeply flawed. You can actually find all these discussions on Sci.Math and you can also contribute because it's not a moderator for it. So you're welcome to go there and contribute. And that's pretty much all I had to discuss for today. And I thought I'd make a video of this since I've seen it many times in Sci.Net. And I'm astounded at how many stupid idiots try to, in fact, convince WM that he's wrong. But the truth is that they're all morons. and their dumbness and stupidity cannot be fixed. They're, they're beyond, they're worse than the ISIS fundamentalists, in my opinion, because these brainwashed idiots can't see past what has been funneled into their peanut brains. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video. This is the New Calculus Channel, and my name is John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.